Hello world. To me, a good YouTube channel is one that means you're excited for the rest of your day when you hear they just unveiled or uploaded a new series or YouTube video, even if it's three to 10 minutes. Even if it's something small, you are now excited to get home, have some free time and turn it on. And you don't mind watching the same video twice. For me, this is Red Letter Media. I watch every single video start to finish and just about everything they upload I've seen more than once. I know they're my favorite because my biggest complaint with Red Letter Media is that they do not upload enough. I do actually have quite a few similarities with them and of course quite some obvious and massive differences. So I'll cover those first because you're probably thinking that already. Well for one, they review movies and TV shows. I review tech, all mostly new tech. I don't do much nostalgia stuff. And I talk a lot about things coming out in the future and they like to talk about things in the past. I upload on a daily basis, usually a couple times a day and they upload like once a week, sometimes not even that. Their channel puts though a humorous twist on something pretty bad. Basic. Now don't get me wrong, Red Letter Media is definitely not family friendly like I am. Very dark humor and absolutely stocked to the brim with language and graphic explanations as well as just dark bad movies in general. That's not what I go for in my videos but I still find it hilarious. Me and my friends laugh at that kind of stuff but I understand that when I'm designing my network I want it to be watchable by anyone so I don't try to imitate that but it's their choice. They went that route and they found their audience with it. They obviously have caught my attention. I can be a fan of things that aren't really like me. What I love about them though is the great trio between Mike Staclasa, Jay Bauman, and Rich Evans. What's great is their lack of excitement and real arrogance towards everything they talk about. So they're not very young YouTubers, they're kind of middle-aged now, but they take that to their advantage. They use their old man grouchiness as a way of conveying humor. Mike, typically in every single episode of Half in the Bag, which is their modern movie review show, when a new movie comes out, it's typically gonna be on Half in the Bag, and Mike nearly always has to ask for actors and actresses names, names of characters and what exactly happened in certain movies. And sometimes it feels like he just slept through it and is now talking about it drunk and hung over. And it's just the most entertaining thing I've ever watched. Go watch something different. Yeah. Just go watch, just go watch a movie you find in your basement. It's in a VHS tape that has Dolly Parton in it. And Wayne Newton. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Rodeo time with Dolly Parton. Just go watch that. Just go pop it in a VCR and watch that. <laughs> Jay typically has to help him out half the time. And you get a similar attitude from Rich, who is a very straightforward, logical guy with the laugh of an angel. But what does that guy need cash for? He's like 89 years old. What does he need, a bigger headstone? <laughs> <laughs> so the Real good. <laughs> to human story. To, to Shia LaBeouf story. At almost nearly the almost exact, the exact same. same moment. That's pretty incredible. Not really. <laughs> It's so iconic. He's very straightforward and everything he says typically just makes sense. However, Jay is likely the biggest movie critic of the group. He actually watches movies in his spare time. And typically if you've heard of a movie that's either artsy or straight from Hollywood, he's seen it and has some pretty distinct opinions about it. Usually ones I disagree with, but I still value his opinion and he completes that trio well. Cause if it was just Mike and Rich, no one would really care about anything. Jay kind of brings this order to it, if you can call that channel order. Okay. Octopus! Pretty chaotic a lot of the time. Now Red Letter Media, similar to me, got their big start because of one big hilarious video. They reviewed Star Wars The Phantom Menace as a character. This was made by Mike and he voiced a character and also acted as him known as Harry S. Plinkett. An insightful review voiced by this really old man, disabled, racist, and offensive old man who's just complaining about life as he goes through and complains about Star Wars at the same time. Star Wars The Phantom Menace was the most disappointing thing since my son. He says the most outlandish things that are intended to make you laugh by being as absurd and shock humorish as possible. And Plinkett reviewed Attack of the Clones, he reviewed Revenge of the Sith, and they're very in-depth, they're all over an hour long. And it doesn't stop there, he reviewed Avatar, he reviewed Titanic, and to me, every single Plinkett review is gold. I wish they came out with more of them because they don't come out very often. He hates most things in general and has the most iconic critical voice that I still imitate on a daily basis. How hard could it be to screw up? Oh, my God. 
like screwing up mashed potatoes. You boil the water and pour the, the packet. Number one, the character. And it's the most elaborate rant of a review going step by step why all three of the Star Wars prequels completely ruined the Star Wars universe. And I didn't have very strong opinions on those movies before I watched the Plinkett review. I remember liking them as a kid, but after watching the Plinkett reviews, I absolutely hated them. And if you like the prequels now, after you watch those Plinkett reviews, it's going to be very hard for you to defend them. But whether or not you agree with them on that, the review is hilarious. And see, a lot would say that it's a loss that someone had to explain to you why a movie is bad and therefore part of your childhood is ruined. I can kind of see where you're coming from because the idea that you once liked something that now someone has taught you not to like means you're at a loss, but I really look at it as a game. I wasn't going to watch the Star Wars prequels again when I was grown up. I wouldn't have had a second thought about them, but now I've discovered a YouTube channel full of infinite hours of entertainment. They've been doing this for years, and of course they're still making more content that I enjoy on a weekly basis, and it all started because me and them have a similar enemy that we can all get together and hate on and just critique why the Star Wars prequels are so embarrassing. Now that's not to say that I agree with them on all things. In fact, I have to say with the more recent content, I do kind of disagree with them on all of their movie likings. They have described their dislike for the new Star Wars films, both Rogue One and The Force Awakens, and I enjoy both of them very much and they don't, which is fine. I like to feast off that generic Disney product that is now going to be coming out every year for likely the rest of our lives. I love that type of film, but they don't, and that's fine. I'm still curious curious about their thoughts on it. And I think a lot of people on my tech channel are the same way. I get tons of comments saying that they're an Android fan, but they find my videos entertaining, so they still watch. That used to really confuse me, but I can confidently say now, I understand where they're coming from. All three guys from Red Letter Media absolutely despised the new Rogue One Star Wars story, but I loved it like crazy. It was like my perfect movie. And yet I've listened to their commentary track on it, where they just rip apart why it's not really even a movie, and watched their Half in the Bag episode on it, where they all complain about it, and I still find it entertaining, even if I disagree, which I think is important on YouTube. I actually think it's really healthy for people to pay attention to those you don't agree with. It means you're hearing new ideas even if they're conflicting with your own, which, to be honest, the world kind of needs that right now. And if you do that as a young YouTuber or just a young viewer of YouTubers, you should be proud of yourself. Pat yourself on the back. And see, I also loved The Force Awakens, but the Plinket review on it was quite harsh and explained why it's not original and all the things they did wrong in that movie. But I still enjoy that similar formula and think if they strayed from it, people would complain that it's not a Star Wars movie. And I didn't really like all of Plinkett's suggestions of how the movie could have been better. But again, I still listen because I care about their opinion, even if it is not my own. So the sarcasm, the arrogance, and the grouchiness is overall the uniqueness of Red Letter Media that separates them from other major movie review YouTube channels. And it's interesting enough, my favorite YouTube channel is actually the smallest one I watch. They're about halfway through 500,000 subs. At the time of me filming this, they have not yet hit 600 thousand but all the other major movie review channels I've heard of or at least watch are typically in that million range or at least nearing it. I can confidently say though Red Letter Media is definitely the smallest YouTube channel I watch if I don't count myself and I think it's because of their creativity towards subjects. See this one show they do called Best of the Worst which is not about reviewing movies coming out it's about reviewing movies that came out a long time ago that were terrible and you never heard of them usually straight to VHS. See I found this show incredibly insightful because you hear a lot of film students out there a lot of film critics talk about how all the best classics all the most creative and insightful movies came out in the past there's a bunch of schlock nowadays all these movies coming out in modern times they're all crap the theater is filled with garbage but the truth is you only remember the classics from the old times all the garbage and schlock from the old days it just gets forgotten and it ends up on best of the worst there are some absolute terrible movies from the past that they break down and they have to decide which one is the best of them and which one is the worst and they typically destroy the one that is their least favorite. It's really creative and what I like about it is you don't have to rely on new big movies coming out for best of the worst to have an episode. A lot of the time on movie review channels it's like well it's January so who cares about what's coming out because Star Wars comes out at the end of the year so we can't really do trailer react videos or anything cool like that. We just gotta kind of wait around for the new movies to come out. With Red Letter Media they always have something in the works. Best of the worst is timeless. You can watch that at any time because it really never is current. Now Red Letter Media does have a 
friend known as Jack Packard, who appears on their shows occasionally and also works with Rich Evans on a gaming channel that is exclusive to live streaming and very, very brief reviews of games that come out once every two weeks. It's a very rare occurrence. It's called Previously Recorded Live, which of course is a joke. That's that's ironic. They, they weren't that stupid. At least I hope they weren't. And I actually watch all of their live streams and all of their game reviews, even though I'm not a gamer. It's because a lot of the live streams are filled with Rich and Jack talking about movies they like, and I'm so frustrated that Red Letter Media doesn't upload more often. I've commented on countless other videos. Please just make a podcast. You don't need to edit it. You just need to sit down, turn on the microphone, maybe a camera, and just talk about anything you want. It doesn't have to be movies. It can just be any topic. And if you're worried about the comments saying this is boring or why don't you just talk about movies, just disable them. All I want is hours and hours of Mike, Jay, and Rich talking because they are hilarious towards any topic. Any topic you throw at them, Rich throws in his logical make sense argument. Mike throws in why he thinks the whole world is kind of stupid and they usually stump people with their answers and I always find it hilarious during the live streams because they have the dumbest fan base that always tips them on Twitch and asks questions that you know they're not going to care about. Like, hey Rich, what do you think of the new Last Jedi trailer? And he's just like, you know, it's alright. Right. Whatever. It's so basic and he doesn't care about anything that his reaction to the fact that he's kind of famous is really the great part of it. They never get excited about much. <laughs> and I think the similarities between them and my channel are that I am not completely engrossed in tech like a lot of my fans are. I don't watch a lot of other tech channels. For me, the tech channel was just kind of looking at the given lineup of Apple products and saying why I like them and why the competition is dumb. I don't really go in depth about why iOS 10.3.2 is gonna change things. I don't really care about who makes the next GPU and the next iMac. I just kind of say things the way they are and leave it at that and I don't really get too terribly excited about the techie things. I'm just kind of a surface level tech YouTuber that likes to look at the big picture. And I think that's a similarity that I like about Red Letter Media is they have an unpopular opinion that Star Wars, the pop culture phenomenon that changed movies forever, is kind of dumb. And in fact, the universe is kind of creatively barren and they make fun of Star Wars on a weekly basis, even though it has one of the largest fan bases of all time, if not the biggest. That's an unpopular opinion, but they're not afraid to say it online. They're being honest, and now they're being rewarded for it by having a YouTube channel that supports them entirely. I feel similar because I had an unpopular opinion that Apple is the best and that it's okay to be part of their ecosystem. Their products are not overpriced. You are getting what you pay for. It's a good bargain. That was not a popular opinion, especially on YouTube. It had a very large Google bias, but I was honest. I came forward and said, no, here's what I think, and obviously I've gotten an audience because of it. That's the very reason and you're watching this. So that's why Red Letter Media is my favorite YouTube channel and still will be for a while. I'm very excited to see what they have next in store. What's your favorite YouTube channel? Let me know in the comments below. Whew, and congratulations, you made it to the end of the first episode of Hello World. Let me know what else you'd like me to talk about on this talk show and I'll see what I can do. Take care.